I am absolutely loving the studio that's currently animating SAO 2. I'm loving how they're making Def Gun so menacing. Oh my god. The music, the atmosphere, the animation, the attention to detail, and the character designs look so freaking good. I, I just want to take a moment and talk about the animation about this episode. Oh, the, the, the entire scene when you see Kirito just, you know, knocking bad bullets, hitting bullets and stuff. Oh my god. The animation, holy oh, shit, dude. You just see him going 360, like jumping and dashing. The frames per second and the fluid frames in that scene is stunning. Look at that clip again and look how many like frames they possibly had to do each scene, like the drawing, the level of animation they had to put in that one specific scene. The amount of budget put in that scene is fucking ridiculous. Because, I mean, you see the way the camera angle spins around Kirito and Shion. I'm like, oh my god, the animation. Just, damn, damn, that, you just, that's something I haven't talked about a lot, about SAO 2. SAO 2 is bringing the GGO art to life. I mean, it is really bringing it to an entirely different level, because the quality of the animation is just stunning as fuck. It is, it's so stunning, because you know how hard it is probably to do the pan of the camera the way the camera pans like that and don't even get me started on that crow the crow in this episode with the animation on it looks so freaking boss and then Def Gun with the steam coming out of his mouth and all that the active camouflage oh my god am I the only one that got like halo vibes from Def Gun you know with his camouflage I'm like active camouflage that's exactly what I was thinking in my mind I was thinking about those elites in Halo 2 saying that to the Arbiter well, well, anyways, Def Gun just, you know, coming out of invisibility, and you see him walking to Shion, it's just, it was so, <laughs> I love this, I love this so much, this is so freaking good. Now, the thing is, I bet anime-only watchers are freaking shocked and stunned, and they're probably thinking, like, what the hell is gonna happen, because you have... She on now paralyzed on the ground. She is on the ground paralyzed. She cannot move. And the biggest thing that is in front of her face right now is Death is staring down at her. But not just any Death. She on sees Death Gun wield the gun that She on used to kill that dude in that bank robbery. So right there, it just shows you like how much level of meaning this entire situation means to Xion. Because this Black Star, this Black Star gun, I don't know the exact name of the gun because I'm not really good with guns. But this gun that Def Gun is using is the exact same gun that Xion used to kill that person when she was younger. And so this has a lot of meaning right now. I mean, this is really emotionally scarring and it will break down Xion. And I mean, it's just it's so amazing the way they decided to cliffhanger the episode right there. I'm like, fuck, I gotta wait another freaking week for an episode. Oh, man. Th th no, seriously, I I'm gonna be straight out honest with you. This is fr freaking good. I'm actually enjoying this anime, these episodes, more than the light novels. The light novels have a certain different type of depth to it with the monologues and stuff, but I mean, I'm enjoying the way they're bringing to life SAO2. I, I love it. I love it so much. Now, one thing I want to quickly cover real quick before I continue talking about this episode. Last week, I said that they kind of cut out a couple of things. Now, there was a bunch of you Chibits in the comments that pointed out a couple things that were also fellow light novel readers. But supposedly from what I read from a, a couple of Chibits, but the scene I talked about technically didn't happen yet. But the thing is, okay, is that the translations I read, the fans' translations, had that before what I read. So, just letting you all know that right now, before it was taken down from, uh, I forget the fan translation site, it starts with a BBA or something, I think it's Baka, but anyways, pretty much the fan translation site I read SAO2 on, Gun Gal Online Volumes, it had that chapter specifically before that entire event of what happened in the last episode, when I was talking about, like, you know, how Kirito charged the dude as soon as he dropped in GGO and killed that person, well, that technically did not happen yet in the anime, and overall, the chronological order of the light novels, so, pretty much, the chapters I read were mixed up, and so that is why I made my mistake, I'm just letting you all know that right now, so I'm sorry if I offended all of you light novel readers and anime-only watchers, it still wasn't that big of a deal, I even said it wasn't that big of a deal, because that can be skipped, it just, it was just fodder and Kirito, so anyways, besides that, look Looking past that, I just want to say something real quick. This episode is just so fucking... Oh. 
I mean, it is so freaking awesome. I, I just love it. I'm loving the music, the animation, the atmosphere, the characters, getting to see just, you know, the strategy going on here. Like, Kirito is going to be charging him, and, you know, Shion's supposed to help and back up Kirito in 30 seconds. And then all of a sudden, when you drop your guard, Shion just gets shot in the side. She falls over. That epic music starts playing. And then you just see the cliffhanger with the black screen and a gunshot, and everybody's probably pissed off raging at their screen. And so, how do you feel about that? Anime Only Watchers, how do you feel about that happening? How do you feel about that cliffhanger? I, I, I'm just curious. I mean, seriously. Do you feel like Shion is going to die? I, I, am, I, I have a very sickening smile on right now, because I'm just curious about how all of you Anime Only Watchers feel right now. I mean, do you think that she could possibly die? Do you feel like Kirito is going to save her? Do you feel like, you know... She's just going to die alone? Or what do you think is going to happen? I, I'm just curious. Another thing I do want to bring up is the entire bit of, you know, the information about Def Gun we learned in this episode. For one thing, we find out that Def Gun was very close to the leader of Laughing Coffin. Supposedly the leader was POH, and this person used to have a saying like, It's showtime! You know, that type of saying. And so, you had Def Gun repeat this phrase, which in turn caused Asuna's group to realize who Def Gun was. So right now, they all realize how big of a threat Def Gun is, because this person is from Laughing Coffin, very close to the leader of Laughing Coffin. They don't know exactly who he is, but he must be very high up in the ranks. And so, right now, uh, the mystery is even deepened even further, because now we need to know who this is, and how close was he to the leader. I mean, he must have been like his right-hand man or something. So anyways, tell me your thoughts personally about this episode of SAO2. Did you all enjoy it like I did? What'd you feel about that animation? What'd you feel about the teamwork, the strategy with the, you know, the 15-minute satellite? What'd you feel about that? What do you feel about, you know, Def Gun just completely tricking Shion and Kirito and attacking Shion in the back? And now that, you know, the ending of this episode pretty much reveals that Gunner X isn't Def Gun. So who is Def Gun? Who is Def Gun's name? That is the big question that is brought up right now. Who is Def Gun? So tell me your thoughts about this episode. I love all of you so much. You have a wonderful day or not wherever you live. Please be safe. TV out.